All right. I think we're ready to start. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Aloha kakahiaka to you all. Thank you all so very much for joining us this morning. I do apologize for a little bit of the delay as um, I was just getting ready to open up the meeting and my internet took a break, so I had to restart it. Um, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Michael Lowe. I'm with the Information and Community Relations Office of the Department of Hawaiian Homelands. And we just thank you also very much for taking time out of your Saturday to join us for this virtual meeting to talk about the La'i Opua Rent with Option to Purchase program. Um, we are, we'd like to go ahead and get started. So what I'd like to start with is um, I want to introduce to you uh, uh, a person from our awards division. She's going to facilitate the meeting and her name is Michelle Hitzman. Good morning, Michelle. Good morning, Michael. Thank you very much. Um, before I get started, I'm, I'm going to, again, throw it back to Michael. <laughs> Start with Pule. Certainly. If we get all, Thank you. Certainly. Let's go ahead and bow our heads in prayer. All right. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we give you all praise and glory for this morning. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to, to uh, have a meeting with our beneficiaries to, to, to discuss the Laiopua Rent with Option to Purchase program phase two. We just thank you, Lord, for all those who could be in attendance today. And we ask you, Lord, that you could please bless those who are either on their way into the meeting or who are unable to attend, that they will be able to get the information at a later date. We just thank you for this opportunity. And we ask you, Lord, to please be in our midst throughout this meeting. All this we ask and pray in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Mahalo. Thank you very much, Michael. So again, my name is Michelle Hitzman. I'm the Hale Manager under the Contact and Awards Division. Um, so as Michael mentioned, we're gonna go over our Laio 4 Rent with Option to Purchase Village 4 Akau. Um, so if you're not on this meeting for that purpose, you know, you're, you're welcome, you can, you can leave. Um, but again, first we wanna apologize too, for those of you that tried to get on last week, Saturday, um, our apologies, we had some technical difficulties, but. Um, I'm glad that we we're able to um, make this meeting this week. We understand there's some activities going on on the Big Island, marijuana, craft fairs, what have you. So thank you very much for taking the time. Um, so Michael, can you start on this slide, please? Sure, stand by. Thank you. So what we're going to do also is we're going to, um, I know as we go through this presentation, there will be questions. If you could hold your questions until the end, we'll give you all the opportunity at the end of the presentation to just kind of ask your questions. Um, so again, it's our Rent with Option to Purchase program. We have 24 units in our Laeopo Village for Akau. Sorry, I can't hear you. Um, so unfortunately, Paula Ayla, she is the acting administrator of the Contact and Awards Division. She wasn't able to make it um, on this call today. So I, again, I'll be sitting in. Kelly Watson is our new chairman. And we have a message for him that we'll go over. Our West Hawaii Commissioner, Makai Freitas. Sarah Okuda from our Land Development Division, she'll go over um, currently what we're doing and maybe some of our future projects. And then we have Deline Osorio from Ikai Kohana and Todd Borland from 3150 Management LLC. And they'll go over the requirements for this rent with option to purchase program. So again, as always, we wanna give thanks to Prince Leo for giving us the opportunity to take advantage of having you know, our homestead. And go ahead and we'll have a, so, <clears throat> As you all might know, we have a new chairman this year, new administration. Um, Chair Watson was, was not able to be with us, but he did send the message and I'll go ahead and read it for you all. Aloha to you all. We are delighted that you have come to this meeting to learn more about the opportunities with the Rent With Option to Purchase program here at Laiopua. This will be a new chapter for some of you on your path to home ownership. We applaud you all for taking the time today to learn more about this program and the processes it will take to qualify you for this upcoming Rent with Option to program selection. I encourage you to take notes, ask questions, and have an open mind. Learn and prepare for what could be a life-changing opportunity. Work hard, be positive, and prepare for this and other selections that will be forthcoming in our future. 
Best of luck to you all. Meke aloha, pumehane, pumahane, kaliwasin. My apologies. So this is our project team. Um, so D this is a DHL project team. Moana Freitas, you may have seen her name on the letters or you have even spoken with her. So she's one of the project team members. Again, Michelle Hitzman, myself. Darlene Kennison is our secretary for our contact and awards division. Again, you, have, you may have spoken with her. She may have contacted you. Our contact center is Deb Oliviato, Darlene Lacuna, and Kaui Cologne. Stuart Matsunaga and Sara Okuda are part of our land development division. Michael Long, Kelly Yoshizaki is our information community relations division. And Paula Ayla, again, the acting administrator for the contact and awards division. So if you have any calls, you'll be calling the contact division. And then you can either speak to Moana, myself, or Paula, and we can help you. So we're going to go ahead and um, start with the land development division. We'll bring Sara Okuda online and she can share with you some information. Hi, I'm Sarah Kuda, engineer and project manager for with the department's land development division. I have a few slides today to talk about the projects in Laiopua. So this first slide, we have the current development villages of Laiopua. The Laiopua rent with option to purchase consists of village for Akao has 118 lots total. There was the previous that was done and we're on our second phase and there should be another one. And also in village five, another 45 lots, but the additional rental offerings are subject to developer obtaining financing. And then in Laiupua village four, Hema, next to Akao, we have 125 lots um, being subdivided and infrastructure with roads and utilities being put in currently. The mix of housing, Oh, um, to be awarded is to be determined still. So for the infrastructure, the construction started in early 2022 and it's to be completed in early 2024, but subject to change. And then we also have Laipua Village 5, where 42 turnkey are occupied and 20 habitat homes are occupied. And then we have that 45 rent with option to purchase planned as well as 10 vacant lots for future offerings. And then on this next slide, we just have the layout of the HEMA 20, 125 lots with the village for Akao on the top left. And on my last slide, for our future Leopua residential development, we have village two. We should start the environmental compliance and engineering design funded by Act 279. The, the schedule is yet to be determined, but there should be approximately 200 lots. There's also Village 1, which we plan to start environmental compliance and engineering design, also funded by Act 279, scheduled to be determined with approximately 200 lots. That's all I have, thank you. Thank you, Sarah. So we're gonna bring on Dilly. Sorry, Jilleen um, from 3150. Oh, hi. Here we go. <clears throat> what you're looking at now, I'm Delindo Soria, working with Ikaiko Ohana. And what you're looking at is one of the finished homes that was in phase one of the Laiopua Villages 4 subdivision. The homes that are being built in the second phase will look pretty much like what you're seeing now, which is quite exciting. So how many people and how how many people are involved in building homes such as this? There are several entities that we have. Ikaiko Ohana is the nonprofit agency that is involved with the development. There is an agreement with DHHL for Village 4 Macau. So Ikaiko Ohana is uh, quite an experienced development company and they've been operating and constructing, constructing affordable homes for over 10 years in Hawaii. The next slide. Who is 3150? 
3150 is the property management firm that is handling the rentals of the units of the homes rather at um, Laiopua. They have been contracted by A0714 Kona LP. That is the entity that is the partnership that um, put this project together. 3150 is a full service organization specializing in operations and social services coordination in affordable housing. They are responsible for compliance with the DHHL and the funding requirements for obtaining um, the, the funds to build these projects. Our next slide, please. Who is A0714 Kona LP? It's a single purpose partnership for all of these new developments. There is an entity that is on its own to build. In this case, A0714 is a DHHL lessee and the operator of the rental project. Ikaiko Ohana is a managing general partner and A0714 Kona LP will contract with 3150, the property management company. Next, please. There are a number of other entities that are involved with the development of this kind. For one, the, the important one is the Department of Hawaiian Homelands. This project started out in an awards that was announced in 2016. And in 2017, Ikaiko Ohana uh, was given the award to build the total of 163 homes. In addition to DHHL, there are the Villages of Laiopu Association. All homeowners within this area must also comply with the regulations that are set up with the Villages of Laiopu Association, or as we refer to it later as VOLA. The lender and investor, in order to build these homes, tax credits were obtained, and it's quite an extensive process to do. The lender and investor is Hunt Capital Partners. They've also invested in several other projects that have been put together by the Ikaiko Ohana team. The property management company, as we stated, is called 3150 Management LLC. The requirements that uh, we must follow in order to promote a project of this type is IRC section 42, 9%. LIHTC. Now that all sounds crazy to you. IRC is Internal Revenue Code, Section 42. So those of you who are working on your taxes, the same entity, Internal Revenue Service, has, has regulations and rules that we must comply with. LIHTC means Low Income Housing Tax Credits. The State of Hawaii Rental Housing Revolving Funds Program is also deeply involved in putting together a project of this type. And it is through the federal government and the state government that the developers obtain the funding in order to build not only Laiupua, but other uh, multifamily projects as well. And then we get into the affordable home sales calculation, meaning what is this gonna look like at the end of the 15 years? Our right, next slide, please. So what does this mean? In this program, the rent with option to purchase means that if you are an interested party, you apply. And if you are approved based on your income, then you get to move into the home and pay rent that is way lower than what you would pay on the open market in Kona. In your handouts that you received in the mailing, there is a chart that shows income and the, the family size that you have. So if you would refer to that chart, you'll get an idea of where you may fall in terms of, are you 30%, 40%, or 60% of the area median income? So what does area median income mean? The federal government has taken a look at all the counties in the United States, and based on the reports that they get from various governmental agencies, they determine HUD, which is the Department of Housing and Community Development, they determine what 30% of the, they determine what the area median income is to begin with. Then they also determine what is 30%, 40%, 60%, 70%, 80%, 
what is 40% and what is 60% of the area median income or the AMI. So that's an important thing to look at. Um, if you have questions about it, we can discuss it later or you can always give us a call. So what does it mean in terms of how many people can live in these homes? The homes that are in phase two are three bedroom and four bedroom homes only. So in a three bedroom home, the minimum number of people that can live there are three people. In a four bedroom home, the maximum number of people that can live in that home are four are nine people, excuse me. The other criteria that we also take a look at is do you have an acceptable housing history? What does that mean? That means, did you rent from someone else before? If we contact them, and we will, would you get a good rental history? Meaning, did you pay your rent on time? Did you take care of the property? Did you get along with the neighbors? A background check is also run, and it's necessary to meet the rent to income ratio. What does that mean? Whatever, whatever your rent is determined to be, your income must be two and a half times that amount. All asset and income information will be verified when you submit your application. And after we've gone through that process, you will be informed if you're approved or not approved. Our next slide. Here's the project criteria. As we discussed just a little while ago, allowable income. The income limits are set by HUD, Housing and Urban Development. The property management company, the developer, and the state do not get involved in that determination. It comes from HUD. The income limits will change annually. So the schedule that was passed out in the handouts that, we see, that you received, there was a, um, there was a spreadsheet that had color coding on it to determine, to show you what the 30, 40, and 60% income limits were, depending on your family size. And there were also rents that were shown there too. Now that schedule is based on what we received from HUD for 2022. Since this is now 2023, we're expecting soon to receive an updated income limit and rent schedule from HUD, which means what we ask you to do is not discount yourself from applying for this program based on what you see on the current income limit schedule. We're going to wait, hopefully we'll get it within the next month or so for the new and updated version from HUD. In many cases, the income limits will increase, so that would be beneficial to you. Um, of course, the rents will also increase too, but from what I've seen in prior years, they've increased maybe about seven to $10 in that range um, each year. But again, I would ask you, do not discount yourself from being eligible for this program, submit your application or give a call to the property management office first. And the calculation of rent, once again, the, the developer, the property management company, the state do not determine what the, in, what the income limits and what the rents are going to be. The County of Hawaii, however, will determine what the utility allowances are. So what's a utility allowance? In the schedule that you receive, you have two rents that are shown. One is the gross rent or the contract rent for us. From that amount, we deduct an allowance that you're given by the County of Hawaii to pay for utilities, such as electricity, water, and sewer. These are deducted and you will have a net rent or a much lower rent to pay than what you see in the schedule. Again, this will change annually too. This meaning the utility allowance may change annually. So there are, an adjust, there are adjustments made from year to year where the rent might go up and the utility allowance might go up as well, or they work in opposite directions. So what you move into and pay rent, if you're approved, will change annually. And we need to make sure that everybody understands you're not paying one set rent for 15 years. Under the rent with option to purchase program, the home is already built and you get to pack up and move in. The beautiful thing about this program is you pay rent for 15 years 
at a much lower rate than you would in the open market in Kona. And at the end of the 15 years, you can exercise the right to buy the home if you choose to. That, that sales price at the end of the 15 years will be much lower than you can expect to pay for a home in Kona. And at that point, at that point, if you qualify for a loan, then DHHL will give you a 99 year lease from that period at the end of the 15 years. So can we go to the next slide, please? Or I might be jumping ahead of myself. Okay, we've established that you're renting the home. So what we'd like you to do as a tenant is be responsible in complying with the terms of the lease and the house rules. Follow VOLA regulations, that is the Villages of Laiopo Association. Pay your rent on time, set up and pay all your utilities. We talked about electricity, water and sewer. Keep your home and yard in decent, safe, sanitary condition. Dispose of trash. Unfortunately, there is no trash pickup service in the subdivision, so you need to take it down to the transfer station below. Maintain and irrigate all your landscaping within your lot boundaries. And since you're a tenant, if there are home repairs that need to be done and maintenance that needs to be done, contact the property management company to have it repaired, but do it in a timely manner. If something breaks, don't wait a year to say, oh yeah, well, I forgot to report it. Do it in a timely manner so it can be attended to and be a good neighbor. You're a tenant in the home for 15 years. And until the point you exercise the option to purchase, all of the repairs will be taken care of, taken care of for you. When you become the homeowner, guess what? You get to take care of all of those repairs too. Next slide. Okay, what are the rents? In the schedule that we sent out to you, here are the rents. And these are what we call net rents. So if it's determined from the process that we have to go through to qualify applicants to move in as tenants, if it's determined that you are at the 30% area median income level and you decide to rent a three bedroom home, the rent is $441. If you're at the 40% level, it's $689. And at the 60% level is 1,184. As you can see, um, on the chart that was sent out, if we look at a three bedroom home on the open market in the county, your rent for a three bedroom is probably about $2,000. And if you're renting a four bedroom it's probably about $2,250. In this schedule here for a four bedroom at 30%, you're paying 471. At 40%, $748, and at 60%, $1,300. These are a lot of numbers that we're throwing out, and you can refer back to the spreadsheet that was given to you. We put these numbers down here so you can see what kind of rent you would be paying as opposed to what the fair market rents are in Hawaii County. My next slide, please. Um, on the rents, this is the net rent. So those were the rents that you would write your check for every month. And then you'd be responsible for paying for your utilities separately because you got the allowance. So what is your income? Once again, the spreadsheet that you were given shows these exact figures. And again, they're the 2022. So we expect there to be increases in the amounts that um, are shown in each category. Let's take a look at, say, uh, four person household, if your income is $28,560 a year for all income that comes into the household, then you would be classified in the 30% AMI range. Thank you. Um, if you are a five person household and your income is 41,000, $160 or less, then you would be classified in the 40% AMI range. Um, we give these to you for, for your um, review and you can see where you might fall. 
But once again, please don't disqualify your household based on what you see here, because we're expecting an increase in these income limits, which would make it uh, possible for some other families that may be really close to the maximums here to be eligible. Can we go to next? And both the, both the income limits and the rents will change annually. That's another reminder again, that they don't stay the same all the time. So how many units do we have here? As Sarah mentioned, there are 24 uh, homes that are being built in phase two, and there are three bedroom and four bedroom homes. From this chart, there are two three bedroom homes at the 30% MI limit, two at the 40% and 13 at 60%. In the four bedrooms, one at 30, one at 40 and five at 60%. So the total that we have here, 17 homes are three bedrooms and seven homes are four bedrooms. Can we go next? If you wanted to know how is this going to work, um, the first step is you're, you're watching this presentation. You have the form and the letters that were sent to you by DHHL. The, Replies are due back to DHHL for everyone that's on this broadcast by Wednesday, I believe it's Wednesday, April 19. You're given a few days extra because of the, um, because you weren't able to tune in last week, Saturday. So do submit your form if you're interested in the program. Once that happens, then we're going to get the list from DHHL of all the participants that are interested in moving forward with the move-in process. And I'm not going to th go through each one of these steps right now. If you're eligible, then we, we move forward to um, getting you ready to move in. And if you don't, if you're not eligible, then you can uh, refer to DHHL for what your next options are. And if you are approved, then we're going to move in 15 families at the end of August or August, September time period, and the remaining nine families will move in at the end of October, November time period. 24 homes in total, 15 August, September period, and nine in the October, November period. Could we go to the next slide? Here you see a um, closer view of the map that identifies only the 24 homes you can by the color coding, you'll notice where the three or fed four bedroom homes are. Once you take a look at the graph and the color scheme to determine, do you want a home that has the master bedroom and all bedrooms upstairs? Or do you want a home that has only the master upstairs? Take a look at the graph that's to the left to see what type of home you might be interested in. And once you get to, um, once you get approved to move in, we suggest that you take a look at this map and determine what would be your first, second, third, fourth, fifth choice. Because on the day of lot selection, depending where you file, where you fall in terms of the DHHL ranking, we will go through the lot selection by your application date with DHHL. We must follow that ranking list and once you're approved, we will assign all the homes dependent upon what you pick. So you may be number one to select a home and you might decide to pick it on the upper uh, cul-de-sac on Cavello Place. If you do that, then we're gonna set aside your application and complete it later because we want to move in people, the first 15 homes in the, I believe that's Ohelo Kai Place. So, do make a note that we have a, a lot selection date of August 12th. We'll put the dates up on a later screen. And by that date, if you're approved to move in, do have more than one selection. Um, what you can count on, the homes are all beautiful. Next slide. Here we have the overview of the homes as they're being worked on. Um, at the top where you see kind of a enclosed black area. There are three homes that, that you see not painted. To the top of that, that paved area is where the mailboxes are located. So the three homes 
to the right side are in the new section and then you see four homes and then the other um, concrete bases in the, in the final four homes on the bottom left. And they're coming up pretty quickly. We're happy about that. All right, next slide. Another view from Mackay looking towards the mountain. And our next. And getting closer up in the homes that are being finished right now. Next slide. Again, these are homes in uh, phase one, but it shows you the landscaping and the plants that are being put in the ground too. Our next. Some of the interior shots. The homes are complete, complete. All you need to do is pack up and move in. In this kitchen, you see a stove to the left is a dishwasher. You got a refrigerator, granite countertops, ceiling fans and air conditioning for all who want it. In our, um, our next view, there's a bedroom, dining room area and bathroom. Next slide, please. The rent with option to purchase is a fairly new program. This is only the second time it's been implemented in the state of the Hawaii. And the first one was called Ho'olima Lima and it was located in Kapolei on Oahu. At the end of the 15 years, I believe 70% of the tenants who were in occupancy at that time elected to purchase their homes. And it was at a much greater lower rent than they could have bought the home on the open market. We have home ownership education and support programs to assist you throughout the 15 years. Now, in the next uh, notice here, tenants will have the opportunity to purchase a home after the 15 year tax credit compliance period. That's an important time period to think about. And while you might say, wow, 15 years, that's a long time to rent. Please keep in mind that the rent that is assessed here is less than half of what you would pay on the open market in Kona. And the reason why the home must be rented for 15 years, it's a tax credit project. Therefore, we cannot allow anybody to purchase the home before the end of the 15 years. We have to keep it as a rental and it's not negotiable. It is a set time period. When the tenant exercises the right to purchase at the end of the 15 years, as I mentioned earlier, at that point, you would become the lessee and you will get a 99 year lease with DHHL. One important factor too, and the question that we get asked is, is any part of my rent going towards the purchase price of the home? We must emphasize, no, it is not. In order to build these homes, there, there are large mortgages that must be paid. And until the end of the 15 years, and we have a lesser amount of mortgage remaining, what you will purchase the home for will be at a much less price than what is on the open market in Kona. So there will be no application of equity from the rent that you pay. Our next slide. How do we prepare for home ownership? For for the entire period of 15 years, there are several service providers that you will work with. One is Ikaiko Ohana, American Savings Bank, Hawaiian Community Assets. We'll be working with tenants who are interested in pursuing a savings program that will give you a nice match of funds too if you meet the goals that you set. So those, um, those tenants that are willing to participate in that program, it would be quite beneficial for you financially as there is matching funds available. Programs that we also ha have coming up are home care courses, home buying and training. Not everybody is able to get through a home buying process without a lot of help. And we're here to provide that help for you. There are periodic tenant home buyer evaluations and there are also programs that will be started that involve your education and health and wellness of the family as in, in addition. So it's not only home ownership, but we do try to provide a variety of other assistance courses as well. Our next. 
And here I'm going to turn it over to my friend, Todd Borland, who's tuning in too, um, to talk to you about how the home sale price is going to be determined at the end of the 15 years. Todd? Todd, <laughs> are you on? There I go, sorry, I was muted okay. myself. I thought I'd, uh, uh, thank you, Dillian. So the, 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 the big question I think is, um, that comes up is what is that price going to be? And I think the, the big answer to that is that price, the future price is undeterminable at this time because it's gonna be based on factors, including um, interest rates uh, at the time of, uh, at the end of the 15 years. It'll also be based upon the HUD and program uh, guidelines and policies in place at that time. Um, so we can't provide a forecasting of what that what that what that purchase amount is. But up on the side there, it's it and it's uh, the way the program's set up. It'll be the higher of um, of two formulas. Um, most of the um, what's what's interesting about the program and it's it's um, it'll be based upon the sales price isn't isn't going to be connected and this is maybe where it gets a little bit different. It's not based upon the value of the home. The value of the home at the end of the fifteen years is really irrelevant to what the what the purchase price is going to be. Um, in, on the slide, it references an affordable sales price. With that affordable sales price, it it's um, in the similar way where the where the income is based upon, uh, or the rental rate is based upon the income amount. This affordable sales price it kind of works in that same way, where the sales price ends up being um, a formula that is based upon the person's income, um, irrespective of what the of, of what the value of the home. Um, may be. So it's kind of a complicated formula. Uh, the big highlight is we can't really tell what the what that price is going to be, but we can it's it's generally accepted that that amount is is going to be significantly lower than what that than what the market value of the homes would um, uh, would be anticipated to be in in 15 years just by by the nature of the of the program details. Um, and again, it's it's based on a series of factors on, on the screen where we've got the household income um, on the AMI designation um, piece. And again, it's it we can't really tell what it is it's going to be, but again, it is anticipated to be um, um, a, a, a lower a lower amount. Um, the other highlight of this the the expectation of the program is that at the end of the fifteen years that um, the tenants will um take uh, will exercise their option to purchase the home the program's designed uh to transition um uh the the tenants the existing tenants into the um uh the owners of the home at that time um in a and 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 the program is designed from a cost standpoint to to facilitate that program so um with the only camera, it does get a little bit complicated. If somebody does want to look at that, I'd be happy to kind of uh, we can kind of look at that and uh, a little bit further on the formulas. It's pretty complicated on that how they they calculate it, um, but uh, yeah, it's it, that gives you some idea of where we're at. Thanks, Todd. Can uh, we go? Yeah, Daylene, if I can add on one more thing, I think one sure. of the parts when you talked about. Uh, and the, in terms of a lot selection, it is going to be, there are 24, um, 24 um, homes in this release. In that right. list, in terms of having kind of an idea if you're one of the 24, the first, when the first person makes there from the order of the, um, on the DHL list, that first person will make their selection. So if you're the next person that's, that's going to be in order to make your selection, you're going to have you effectively 23 homes to select from. And so as you work down the list, your, your available selections of homes will be reduced to, if you're the 24th person, you'll have the opportunity to either make that selection for that home 
or your only other option is to s simply not exercise, um, not participate in the program, if that makes sense. So there's really, um, the homes do get obviously reduced as, um, as homes are, are, um, are selected by people um, uh, lower on the, on the criteria, on the uh, beneficiary list. Right. Yes. Okay. Okay. So what happens leading up to um, what Todd just described? Once all the 24 homes are selected by eligible applicants, um, anyone else that is still interested will be put on a backup list which means when a vacancy occurs, then you will be called to see if you're still interested in applying. Um, there are situations, situations change in our lives from day to day. So while today you might decide, yes, this is something that you wanna participate, if a family situation or changes and you no longer can participate and decide to go for other options that are offered, then you may do that. So we have people on a backup list in order to take the place of the person that decides they're not going to move forward. So we will contact anybody after that. However, you, at that point, we have to fit you into the area median income of the person that originally selected that home. So in this case, if you were to move into a multifamily property, say it was an apartment building, you're more than likely to be assigned to what unit you're going to live in. In this particular case, because it is a rent with option to purchase and you're selecting the home that we hope you will make your home after the 15 years, you're allowed to pick the home. And that is why I said, you know, try to pick maybe up to five different um, lots that you might want to take a look at, depending on the configuration of the house. And if there's an opportunity before the lot selection to allow you to go into the subdivision and take a look at the homes from the outside and you decide that you like the greenhouse instead of the blue house, then um, you know, keep that in your mind, keep that in mind too. Okay, our next slide, please. If you're not interested in this program, complete and return the response form saying you're not interested you'll remain on the undivided interest list and the Hawaii Island wide residential wait list based on your original date of application with DHHL. And yeah. next. So we're at April 14th now, and we've gone through the orientation meeting. We will take between now and June to qualify everybody that's interested in the program to see if you can meet the requirements. You've already met them for DHHL. We must qualify you to meet the low income housing tax credit uh, requirements as well. Lot selection, circle the state, August 12, 2023. Once you are approved, you will be hearing from DHHL once again that said, congratulations, you've been approved, come to the lot selection date. We don't have a time I yet, or place of where that meeting will be held, but we certainly will have it by the time you get the letter saying, congratulations, come on down. So as we said earlier, phase, this is phase two. However, within that phase two of 24 homes, we are going to finish 15 at the end of August, September, and nine at the end of October, November time period. Next slide, please. Questions. Um, it, uh, Michael, how are you handling this? Are the questions coming back to you or are people going to raise their hand? Okay, so let me break out of that for one second here. Okay. Stand by. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, now that we're into the question area, um, you should be able to raise your hand. If you look down below on the Zoom, you should have a reactions button. If you click on the reactions button, um, you should see a raise hand. Um, the raise hands will come up in order and I will select them that way. You're also welcome to uh, put a question in the chat 
And as we go through this process, I will um, facilitate some of the questions in the chat. So are there any questions? If you could please raise your hand and I will call on you. Michael, I had been sent uh, one of the questions. I don't know, can we maybe just start with that as uh, somebody, um, a question sent over to me? Okay, sure. Yeah, go ahead and start okay. with that. Just to kind of get it kicked off. Uh, so the question came, if the tenant for 15 years does not qualify or want to purchase the home, are they evicted? So um, if I can answer, the, the, the rent with option to purchase program um, does not, um, uh, it is an option to purchase at the own at the, at the end of the 15 years. Um, what, what may happen though, is the, is the, um, I'll refer to as kind of the subsidy on the rent may, uh, may change at that time. So if there's, um, so there won't be a there won't be an eviction. The program the the potential to remain a tenant remains on. Uh, again, the goal is to try to have people convert via the uh, purchase of the home. Uh, but there isn't um, uh, there isn't a, a hard eviction at that point. It will be subject to, but the rent subsidy may not extend beyond that fifteen years. And so at that point, um, again, I, I think that. Uh, it's, you know, again, hopefully the, the program does, you know, provide every, people are able to purchase through the um, through the program. And then the next part of that was if they have, if they vacate the home is another person on the DHHL um, is another person on the DHHL apply to rent or purchase. Um, Michelle, can I throw it? To, can I put that one to you? If they vacate the home, is another is another person on the DHHL list um, applied to rent or purchase? Um, um, oh, shit, that that comes back. That comes back to the property management company. That's why we have a backup list. So, say someone moves in. Say someone is approved and moves in, and two years later they decide that they don't want to continue renting or stay until the end of the 15 years to exercise their right to purchase and they move out, the person next on the backup list or next or next will be contacted to see if they're still interested. So it's the 3150 property management company that will maintain that backup list. Right, so, but after, however, after the 15 years, I think is what the question oh, was, the question? right? If they, if they rent for the 15 years, they move out, what are the next steps? So I think that kind of connects with the question of whether or not they'll be evicted, right? What do we do with that property? Can they continue to rent? Or is the, the purpose of this to convey to a, to a lease? Um, I mean, and I'd be honest with you, that eviction one, I'm not sure. But I think the intent of this program is after the 15 years, it is a conversion to a lease. So we're looking for a purchase and convert them to a lessee. So if something comes back to us as a department, we will offer Does she represent the an award. Huh? So we would offer it to the applicant. Sorry, I just heard, I wasn't sure if that um, someone had a question about. Yeah, somebody had, no, somebody was um, unmuted. So yeah. they kind of chimed in there, so. So okay. again, we would offer, if it came back to the department after 15 years, we're, we would offer it as an award to the applicant, applicant list. Okay, very good. Um, Todd, was that, the, was that the end of your question, sir? Those are the only ones that came to me via chat. Okay. So I'll, I'll put it back to you to, to facilitate the rest. Okay, very good. So uh, first question, first person to raise their hand is Cora. Cora, go ahead and unmute and ask your question, please. Oh, I, I have my personal one, but I wanted to piggyback on Michelle's um, cause for clarity is a um, follow up for clarity on. So the, the, uh, that um, example was the renter wasn't, was not interested in purchasing. So would the rent renter have to vacate and then put back on the waiting list? Or does she forfeit her opportunity of, of 
and taking off the lips. So as far as the vacating, because I know um, Todd talked about at the end of the 15 years, if you choose not to purchase, it'll become, you know, maybe the subsidy will go away. So I would imagine he's saying, if you do continue on to rent, the rent might not now go to market value. Um, I myself would have to get some clarity because I'm under the impression that this program is meant for a 15 year rental. And at the time of the 15 years, it is a conversion to a, to a lease, right? So you then as a tenant has the option to purchase it. And I think if you choose not to purchase, then we would move on to the applicant. But again, let me get that clarified and we can put that question up and some way get it up on the website. Now to answer the other question or statement I think you made, it had to do with if you were taken off the list, if you get thrown back on the list. Now understand that this program is a rental program. You're an applicant the entire 15 years that you are on, you are renting and you're participating in this program. So you're not taken off of the applicant list during this entire period. So with that said, you will be renting this in Leopua. However, if any other projects or offers come up on Hawaii Island and we get your application date, then you may have an opportunity to, to get that award instead, right? So you decide, I'm gonna take the award. We have something in Kilkaha, for example, and you have the opportunity, you could take that award and then you just, you'll have to obviously um, move out of the, the rental unit and take the award. Did that answer? At least that portion of it. Um, I I think so. I I think that that still um, that would be giving the applicant an opportunity to accept or not, and <clears throat> to forfeit her ability. But anyway, I think for now until you get clarity with the department, I will accept that explanation. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, my question. My question was. What is the value of each home by the contractor? Although I think Todd was unable to say what was the valuable when going into the, the purchase or the valuable or trying to identify an amount or cost if, you, if the applicant is wanting to purchase. I understand that because you've got to work out formulas. But my this question is at, that when going into a contracting uh, working agreement with the L, you usually estimate how much per each home would cost. And that to me would be somewhat of a valuable amount, approximately amount. That is my question. Going into the contract, how much per each home was looked at as purchasing or cost? To give me an idea what the valuable would look for, like. not looking at the problems, just yeah, them. yeah, Corey. The if I can try the the price at the end of the fifteen years is disconnected from the actual like a perceived market value of that property in the in the open market. Under one tier of the formula, the the formula cites to be the remaining balance of the loan at the end of the 15 years it's it's uh um which isn't connected with the value of the property so um even now the the cost of construction doesn't doesn't tie back to the what the you know what the sales price of the home would potentially be it's it's just it's a it's a totally different model in terms of how they're pricing these homes um the 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 price that they put on is labeled affordable sales price. It's meant to be how do you provide a price for these homes that's a fail affordable to that to that unique um, uh, that unique person at the end of the fifteen year term. So um, I think even if you had the the like the cost of construction, that cost of construction doesn't take into account what you'd be, what you're, what you're paying at the end of the 15 years. Um, it, it just is similar to what's the value of the, of the, of the, of the lease, that lease that DHHL will offer at 99 years isn't connected with the, with like the value of the lot. It's simply, um, uh, Michelle, it's a dollar per, it's a dollar per year lease on the, 
Yes, that's correct. For ninety nine. You know, it's a dollar per year. It's literally you know a placeholder in the for all intents and purposes for the lease. It's not respective of the of the of the value of that of that lot. It certainly isn't a dollar per year uh, uh, on a lease standpoint. Um, thank you, Todd, for um, that. Um, okay, I I know that the purchase would just be the house alone. I am totally aware of that. My question is in the event that um, a Kaika Ohana builds home and say I end up not, uh, not even qualified for this program and I, I able to get an opportunity to build somewhere else, I would like to know what is the value of the home, not, not with any discount or low or, or low income. I just wanna know what is it that you folks are value building per home. That's all. I, that's my question. Can you guys just give me the value of just what is it for a three bedroom? That's all. Yeah, I, I'm not. I don't have an answer for you uh, on today's call. I, I you know, our program isn't as we're developing this is is literally developed with the financing for this program. So. Um, I've, you know, I've, I've, having driven through the property, I think you, you would probably be better served on what do you think that, uh, what those homes uh, would be going for if they were, you know, offered for, for it, sale than I, than I would. I think, I um, from Molokai, so thank Cora, you. Yes, Cora, thank you. Cora, this is Doug Bigler. Can you hear me? Can everybody hear me or not? I can hear you, Doug. Okay. And just for introduction, Doug is with the, uh, is the developer. So I can give it to, just by means of an introduction. Yeah, a, co a couple of things I can I can probably help you with, and I apologize because today I am driving. But the the we can get the cost of the home to you. Uh, that would be hold on. Uh, I can start video here, but it's going to look a little rough here. But I'll start the video anyway. Anyway, am I there? I tried to start it. I don't know how, but let me try. That's yes, okay. That's, there. Yeah, that's okay, Doug. We can hear you as the main thing. Um, I have okay. a picture of you, so we're fine. Go ahead. Here's 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 the the deal, real quick. The 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 home is financed in, in two. Most of the home is built. Go straight with equity, basically. Uh, it's built with equity, so most of that is forgiven at the end of the fifteen years. But core to your question is, we can give you essentially the cost of the home okay so you'll have some basis and it's likely that we're building at a lot today we're building less than what the, the home would sell for and quite frankly uh, uh, todd it, the sales price of the home is form formulaic right and so what we also can do for you as we go through the process here is we can give you some idea of what you could buy that home for today because it'll allow you to plan kind of for a future purchase. Now, somebody asked earlier, I'm just going to cover a few few questions that were asked earlier. There is no um, right to evict someone under the R program, which is the HHFDC rental program, for someone who simply elects not to buy. But the way the program is supposed to work is that what you can purchase the home for, essentially you're out of pocket, is supposed to mimic what you're going to rent for. So that's the incentive generally for someone to buy the home is that, and, and the difference is, is the reason Todd is being kind of soft on this is because you are priced at your then, uh, uh, you're not priced at what you, you rented for originally, you're priced at your then AMI, okay? So what I gave kind of an example, and I'm gonna throw this out here, but I want anybody to, you know, nobody beyond this group talk about it, but basically, we looked at a three bedroom home and we said, if I were at a 5.5% at a interest rate, and if you were to buy that home today, a 60% tenant, okay? And it adjusts a little bit on family size and some other variables, but it was right around $250,000 for that three bedroom home, if you were to buy it today, okay? But I wanna zero in, I'm, I'm just letting you all know. Thank you. Go, okay. Hey. 
and the cost of that home would far exceed, you know, the cost of these homes could be six hundred, seven hundred thousand dollars to build. Thank you. You answered my question. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, thanks very much, Cora, for the questions. Next up is Davaline. Davaline, go ahead and unmute um, and open up your video if you can and ask your question. Yeah, so um, I'm, I'm understanding from the question earlier that um, at the end of the 15 year, we would still have to qualify for that rent to own. Um, if I could answer. You need to qualify to rent for 15 years at the end of the period. Then when you become a homeowner, we need to have you qualify to get a mortgage because okay. you, yeah, you will have um, completed the 15 year minimum period. And uh, one thing I forgot to mention to you too, we have to hold the 15 years. So if somebody went out and won the Mega Millions jackpot want to buy the house right right now we cannot allow you to do that we still have to wait the 15 year period and also another point that i wanted to bring up if you're currently renting now and you have a housing choice voucher you can rent in this subdivision one of the 24 homes using that housing choice voucher if within the 15 year period you apply for a housing choice voucher from the county and you obtain it then it will be applicable in this project as well. So two things that I, I needed to. And so do. that's why you have that bracket 30, 30%. What is that up to 60% that they have to qualify for? So my main question is, if the amount of people in that household over qualifies for it, does it disqualify them to get the, the home? If you exceed the 60% limit, then yes, you would not be eligible because you're over the amount of income that we're allowed to service in this program. But once again, I ask you, please don't disqualify yourself yet because we're waiting right. for new 2023 income limits to be um, provided by HUD, which may increase the, the amount of uh, earnings you can right. have within a family unit for each year, for this year, for 2023. So um, another question, each year we would have to re-qualify for this rental program, or once we qualify, that's it. We have the 15 years to, to maintain that rental. Correct. Once you're qualified and are deemed to be eligible, every year there is a recertification process that we must go through, but you don't need to re qualify it's a recertification not requalify just a recertification in income or recertification just who's in the house you're still working if you have change of employment correct all of the above but, but, okay. but Aileen, i think i think what she's getting down to is this if your income goes up under the program that we have again this is the rental side there mm -hmm. is no um you can't evict a tenant on that basis. Oh, okay. So That's you, what I was, will, I was Yeah, I know where you're going. I got gotcha. you. I know yeah. where you're going. Okay, what you're asking is, so I'm saying to you is that you'll, your income will be certified each year and you'll, mm -hmm. you'll have to make the disclosure. But to the extent oh. that your income goes up in the, follow, say, the following your annual recertification, we have no basis to evict you based on your income going up. Oh, okay. Well, okay. we have to okay. be a little careful of that too, though, Doug, because if, say, two more adult people join the household and that's the cause of the income, and if they've moved in at 30%, then we may have to reevaluate. So the number yeah, of people in would, the household um, makes would, a difference too. Yeah, that, yeah, that's for people in the household. So if you're adding right. people in your household, that's true, that your own income can go up or whoever's in that household to start with. But yes, if you brought other people in and it was you did not qualify because of people you added to your household, that's different. If your own income oh, okay. goes up or if your household income goes up because but all of those people were in your original household, then we couldn't do it on that basis. Mm -hmm. But you couldn't come in later and say, yeah, I added my, you know, somebody who earned, 
you know, several hundred thousand dollars, I added them to the lease. And then that threw you over. That's a different story. I'm glad you uh, clarified that, that Daylene. You can't so raise you your income that by virtue of uh, you're adding to the house. That's pretty good. I think um, at the end, I mean, at the end of 15 um, years, I think my biggest fear is, you know, market rate tax credit, market rate tax credit. I mean, the, the market now is really high. And um, I know it's giving us a better opportunity if we get into the rent to own to, you know, set aside, you know, and help that end of 15 years. Um, I think that's where the biggest fear lies for me is at the end of 15 years, if we don't qualify or we're not able to, you know, purchase is, and, but then you guys said you have a program to help people at the end of that 15 years or between that 15 years where you can help to purchase um, fixed credit or something like that, or just learn how to purchase. I seen on one of the slides that Daylene had. Um, yes. Hawaiian Community Assets is a good um, entity to work with. They have homeownership programs there. And why I encourage you to go to them is because they have a matching funds program. So if you're able to say save a thousand dollars, they may match it with 2000. I'm not quite sure whether or not that's still applicable. It's of course, uh, they can use that program if there are still funds available, but they walk you through the savings program, help you set up a savings program so that at the end of the 15 years, you have a sufficient amount for a down payment, hopefully. And there are right. different lending programs to go through as well. So what I always tell everybody in these presentations is you're saving money in the lower rent that you're going to be paying. Please do not go out and buy the 75 inch TV or a brand new truck that money should be set aside for you to be able to have that town payment without worrying at the end of the 15 years, where you're going to get it from. So um, you yeah. Todd brought up earlier, at the end of the 15 years, the lower rent will go away because that's a tax credit rent. So what you will be looking at, right. if you, you choose to say would be a different, higher rent amount. So there are besides mm -hmm. um, Hawaiian Community Assets, there's also Council for Native Hawaiian Programs, and there are others that may come about in the next 15 years as well. Yeah, so I just wanted to clarify. I know nice. um, Thank you. I heard I heard um, I heard her say market value again for the houses. The houses after 15 years will not be sold at market. Correct. 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 Okay. Thank you. And and Deline, I would encourage, I'm, I'm not sure who is talking, but I would encourage you you know, ultimately, this is something all of you who are interested in this program should be able to look up online. We're, I mean, we should teach you and uh, Hawaii Community Assets should teach you how to go online and pull it up. So you yourselves can actually look at if I sold, if I bought today, what would that house sell for? Okay, very good. Thank you, Doug. Let's see. Next person to ask a question is Victoria. Victoria has her hand up. Victoria, please. There you go. Unmute. Video on. Go ahead, please. Aloha. Um, so I I just got a letter from to get uh to do this program, but it was for my dad and he passed away. So what, is he disqualified or does the beneficiary take over or even do we even still? Okay. Get to so, apply. Uh, mm, so I'll answer that. So it really depends on what at what state in the process you're in. So if dad just recently passed away, then um, odds are the answer would be no, because you probably won't go get to our process in order to become the applicant. Um, because unless you're the there's multiple things, right? If you're the name successor, and then you would need to get qualified. If you're not the name successor, or there is no name successor, then we would have to go to a public notice, and that takes a few months. And in this case, um, what do we say? Between by by June, we would need to have the eligibility and all of that taken care of by um, Ikai Kohana and thirty one fifty. So, have you started the process? Have you submitted that um, that certificate? 
No, because nobody calls me back from the office. Oh, okay. But so he's he passed and so he you passed. haven't had the opportunity to submit yeah. yet. Okay, so, so I'm going to say, odds are you probably won't get to that point. You probably won't have enough time or be approved before this program, the deadline of this program. Okay. But um, definitely give them a call, application branch, and get that in. So if you are the successor, then we have other opportunities coming up that they hopefully can take advantage of. Mahalo. Michelle, I know during the first presentation, there was a, a, a big uh, uh, recommendation in terms of making sure you have your uh, successor name. Can you touch on that for this benefit of this group now? Sure. So again, as applicants, uh, um, you have the opportunity to um, name a successor. But again, as an applicant, your successor must be 50%. So for this particular program, um, I, I believe I saw one of those questions in the chat. If the applicant, the tenant, passes away within that 15-year program, the successor, must, there must be two things in order for the successor, successor to take over the rental agreement, is they must be the named successor and they must be 50%. So that's why we're saying, it's, you know, regardless of this program itself, it's always best to have a named successor then you won't have to go through that whole public notice and then others can put claims in for it. You know, the applicant will specifically designate that this is the person that I want to take my position. So it's always best to do that. Contact for, so for this program, um, you would contact the West Hawaii District Office um, to, well, you can go either West or East Hawaii District Office on the Hawaii Island to do your name successor, designation of successorship. Is that? Okay, I believe that answers the questions. Thank you, Michelle. So uh, there's no other hands raised on the live. So what I'd like to do is go ahead and go into the chat box and um, start asking some questions from there. This first question comes from Sid. Sid says, today's meeting is being recorded. Will it be available for us to share it with our ohana? who were not able to attend? If yes, where will it be found? So yes, to confirm, I'll go ahead and take this question. Um, this, this meeting is being recorded in its entirety. What we will do is we will post it on a website, dhhl.hawaii.gov. On the menu bar, you can go to awards. When you click on awards, you'll see a list of different meetings um, the very top, you'll see La Io Pua rent with option to purchase. That would be for this one, phase two. When you click on that, it will take you to um, the landing page. And in there, you should be able to view the recording. Um, after this meeting is complete, I will convert it. However, it will take a couple of days, of course, because we are on set. It's Saturday right now, and our web. Uh, the person who's taking care of our web won't be won't receive this request until probably Monday. Um, at that time, she'll go ahead and get it uploaded. So if you do have Ohana that uh, will want to view this, it will be posted more than likely on Monday or Tuesday. OK, so thank you very much for that question. Let's see. Uh, the next question comes from M. Pacquiao. Within the 15 years, can a renter pursue offerings in V4 HEMA? Okay, yes, so I'll take that. Um, so the answer to that question is yes. Again, because you're an applicant during this 15 year program, you, will, you are still eligible for other offers on Hawaii Island as long as we get to your application date. So I think, um, there was, I think the next question too kind of rose into that. Talking about, again, if your name will be placed back on the list. So again, keep in mind, because you're renting as an applicant, your name never comes off the application list. It'll only come off the application list once we convert that lease after the 15 years. So yes, you remain on the application list and yes, you will still be eligible for other opportunities on Hawaii Island, as long as we get your application date. You know, I'd like to, Michelle, just to clarify a little bit sure. on that question. Um, say an individual after the 15 years decides that they, that they do not want to purchase that particular home. Mm -hmm. 
In terms of where they go on the list, do they remain in place on the list or are they put at the back of the, at a different place on the list? So again, during this whole 15 years, they never are removed from the application list. Okay. They remain on the application list based on their original date of application. So, so if they choose not to purchase, their position is still the same on the application list based on their date of application. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Next question comes from Francine. Francine asks, my mom is half Hawaiian and I am not. What happens if she dies during the 15 years? Um, so again, because this program is for applicants and it is a 15 year rental agreement, the successor must be 50%. Because um, you will not only, the name successor and 50%, to have the opportunity to step into the rental program, or at the very least, the successor must be 50% to take the position on the application list. So what, what happens to the house if there's no successor, the house will go back to 3150 and they will go to the next person on the back of list. However, uh, Michelle, I, th I think what you explained last week, after the 15 years, if the tenant exercises the right to purchase after the 15 years and now there is home ownership involved and there is a mortgage and there is a 99 year lease. At that time, I believe what I understood from last week's presentation, at that time, if the uh, head of household and the beneficiary passes, then the successor could be 25%. Is that correct? So that is correct. So again, that is after the 15 years, right. after the 15 years and the person decides to um, purchase the home, you now become a lessee, right? So the successor at that point can be 25% based on their relationship. So even the relationship of the successor will, will matter also, right? So it, it's just not 25% to any family member. It is 25% to your direct line, right? Children, grandchildren great siblings but again during during the 15 years you're an applicant success there must be 50 percent okay thank you very much next question comes from robin robin asks how are incomes determined w-2s um it depends on how you're employed if you get a w-2 then yes if you are an independent contractor saying you sell real estate or you sell insurance or you sell a product, 1099 will be requested. Uh, we look at all, all methods of income, gross income from all family members. Okay, thanks, Deline. Next question is from Nani. Nani says, I have a question. Nani, are you online? Nani, you'd like to ask? Go ahead, please. Yeah. Hey, I was just wondering, Aloha. Um, Aloha. Has, as you guys brought up earlier with the 60% on the monthly um, reassessment just to check, what if you're on a 60% level at the mm -hmm. time of the program and, um, and your, as far as your monthly income decreases, do you get to go down, like follow down to like a 30% bracket or does it stay at the 60 once you, once you qualify for the program? You stay at the AMI that you qualified. Okay. It's not okay. a moving, it's not a moving, oh, this year you're at 60, next year you might be 40 because somebody quit a job or lost a job or retired. You pay the rent based on what you moved in there at that AMI level. Well, okay, and the, because and the, so the only reason why I asked because you, you're you telling us that, that it doesn't move for what you qualify for on the percentage bracket, but you were saying that if you're in a lower bracket, if you're increasing the income, that it would move up to the higher bracket. So if it doesn't move, it shouldn't move for the lower going higher and higher going lower? No. Once you move in at the AMI that determine, that's determined by the gross income of all family members, when you're approved, you move in at that level and you stay at that level. However, if your income increases or say you were part-time at the time of application and now you're full-time 
or you get a raise, we certainly hope that people will increase their income as time permits and your job permits. The rent still remains in that AMI that you moved into. Okay. But if you moved in at 60 and something happened, you lost a job or a household member who was earning income moved out, you do not drop to a lower level. You remain at 60. Okay. Mahalo, thank you. Okay. Thank you very much for the question. Next question comes from Robert. Robert asks, what happens if after the 15 years we are already paying a mortgage with option to purchase and my father passes away? Will the successor qualification still be the same, 50%? And I think we answered that, Michelle, but did you want to elaborate again real quick? Yeah, so again, after the 15 years, um, you the applicant purchased, the applicant now becomes a lessee. As a lessee, your successor can be 25%, but again, it, it ha it's based on the relationship, right? To the lessee, downwards and sideways. Children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, siblings, spouse, 25%. If you go outside, like diagonal, meaning niece, nephews, cousins, and even if you go upwards to parents, that has to be 50%. But but yeah, as a lessee, you have the opportunity to pass on to a 25% successor. Okay, great. Thank you. This, uh, this question comes from Chastity. Chastity writes, if I'm due to give birth after the move-in dates, should I add my baby to my initial household size or would, change, or would it change during the annual recertification? If you're Hapai at the time of application, you count that baby. Okay, great. Thanks, Deline. This question comes from Mahilani. I am living in a Kupuna apartment on Oahu and I got awarded and, uh, and I'm on a HUD program. Can the HUD program be transferred over to the Laio Pool program? Um, are you in a property now that has a project-based subsidy so that if you move out, you don't get to take it with you? Or are you, do you have a housing choice voucher? If you have a housing choice voucher, it is portable. You can move it to the Big Island. So please check with your property manager where you're at now to see what type of subsidy you have. Okay, no, I, I, I don't. I don't have a voucher. Um, it's just a housing um, HUD. Is this a HUD pro program? Um, well, if you had a voucher, you could move it. But if you don't have a voucher, you're still paying rent at a lower amount, but I'm not Correct. sure what it is you're paying now. Um, it is, uh, I get recertified every year. Yes, but is the rent that you pay because you live in that project? Yes, um, because I have social security, uh, retirement social security and they go according to the income. Mm -hmm. Well, that's 30%. Um, right, but we don't, as I said, don't discount yourself from applying, even though you're on Oahu, because we have three bedroom and four bedroom homes, or the minimum number of people in the home has to be three. Okay. So if you have three in the household, we're gonna count the income from all the household, and then we'll base the rent upon how many people are in the household and where your total income from all sources uh, oh, okay. adds up to. Okay, all right, mahalo. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you for your question. This next question comes from Corey. Corey asks, if our income exceeds the 60% AMI, are we automatically disqualified from this program? Having larger income helps to ensure we can pay the rent. The most that we can accept is on the schedule that you see that was included. If you exceed the 60% AMI, then you would not be eligible for the program. But once again, I ask you to disqualify yourself now, apply anyhow, because we're waiting for new income limits to come out from HUD that might be greater than what you see on the spreadsheet that you were sent, and that might make you eligible. Daylene, if I could add piggyback that, 
if you were not part of the first 24, it'll also be the case that there'll be a, there'll be a certification process, say, you know, several years down the line, the, the income level will be based upon at that, the, the weight, the list that we're developing now, the, the wait list of the people that do not, that apply for this pro for this project and are not selected will remain on the wait list. For the, if, if the first tenant were to, for some reason, move out three years from now, we'll be looking at the income level at that time. And so you're not sure where you're gonna be in three years. And so when we're saying we are encouraging you to, you to apply, it's by the fact that there are some unknowns. So at that point, it'll be, it's not your income level at, in this exercise, it'll be your income level when you're actually the next up for the, and you're certifying at that, under the guidelines and your income at that time. Does that make sense? So. Um, okay, I, I got what you're saying. So if you applied now and you were not approved because you were over the 60% limit now in two years from now, somebody moved out, you are still interested. Your income might've dropped because maybe somebody in your household moved out. Um, maybe you took a, a different job. So as long as you remain on our backup list or on our list, if we have a vacancy, we will go up back to the backup list for this offering. And if we do not have anybody on the backup list and we'll send letters out to everybody again, that says, okay, you're not on the backup list, but we have this opportunity coming up. So you apply, even if you're over income, we know you're interested and we'll come back to you at a later date. And there's, there are possibly other phases that are coming up too that um, you might be able to uh, if I can disqualify add, yourself for now. If I can add one more, if you don't, if you apply in, if you, if you don't apply now and you apply three years later, you're, you're going to be the, you'll be at the in line behind everybody that's applying on this program, regardless of where you are on the on the beneficiary list. The wait list will occur for this project uniquely. And then anybody that effectively like a, like a walk-in person that applies after the date will be placed on the list at behind the, the, the wait list that we've established for this project. I'm gonna jump in on that. Yeah, please so do Michelle, not, if I've misstated that. Not, yeah, so that's how we're trying to interested form today right because we're not doing a, a walk-in type of opportunity if you guys exhaust the backup list we will go back out to all the applicants and redo the offer so it's not where you know i i we have a backup list but if any applicants walk in off the street that they can just come in and it's a first come first serve you know just add it to the backup list we have a backup list once we exhaust that if there's any more houses available we will redo the offer and go out to everyone again. So it's even so again, worse than I described that you're, if you don't make this, if you don't apply, it, it'll be probably low likelihood that you, um, that your, your opportunity, you would have, it would have to exhaust the complete list before you'd, you'd be, have an opportunity to insert your name onto the, into the, into the pool again. So again, yeah, so, for, so basically if you're interested, Put in today. Yeah, put in it now and then allow 3150 to go through the, the eligibility and see where you fall. Okay, very good. Let's move on here. I don't know if this is a question or a comment, so I'm going to verify. Maria Okimoto Miranda says, great question. Is that just a comment or do you actually have a question? Oh, you'll need to unmute, please. I'm sorry, you'll need to unmute, please. When you're recertifying every single year, I thought that was a great question. Are we going to increase or decrease your rent based on that? So you said, no, you're locked in on where you entered in at. So that answered the question, but I thought that was good. Okay, very good. Thanks for your comment. 
jumping on. The next question comes from Michelle's iPhone. Michelle, go ahead and unmute and ask your question, please. Michelle, are you there? I saw you there earlier. Okay, I see you there. You're unmuted and your video is on. Go ahead with your question, please. Yeah, I can't hear her. My yeah, I, I'm not hearing her either. Um, yeah, I am not hearing it. I'm not seeing where she go. Michelle, are you able to type into the chat the question? It sounds like we're having some yeah. audio difficulty with you. Yeah, it looks like she said she'll type it. Okay, mm -hmm. great. We'll look for that. So in the meantime, um, here is a question from Harmony. Harmony asks, oh, I'm sorry, let's see. I'm just going to go through. We already answered Maria Okimoto's question. Um, Chastity Aranda says, mahalo. Um, Harmony says, I currently live out of state. Does that impact my ability to qualify through my current source of income? No, that doesn't because you're out of state. Um, we would hope that when you move though, that you have something lined up for income, but we're going to use your current gross for all household family members and what your anticipated gross may be when you move to the big island, when you move to Kona and where your income is going to be. So that would be helpful. But don't disqualify because you're not living in Hawaii right now. Okay, very good. Let's see, Michelle, I, are you still typing? We're still... I hope you are We're waiting for your question here. I see that you said you'll type it in. Stand by everybody. Michelle's question is coming. Okay. Michelle says, I'm calling from Texas and I am an applicant and I was sent an offer for this program, but I need to know about the blood quantum or blood level. Okay. So if if you're an applicant on our wait list and we sent you an offer, we only sent offers to, to those on the list that were certified, Y certified. And what that means to us is they have been verified 50%. So I'm not sure if that's what you mean by you need to know about the blood level or if you're talking more about successorship. Um, but again, if you're an applicant and you receive the offer, then you have already been verified 50%. Will the level be ever lowered on percentage? Good question. Yeah, so that came out quite a bit last week. And um, while I know they're working on our commission and our Congress, our, our legislatures, they're working right now on the successorship quantum, right? And, and I think we went up twice for, with the bill to, to DC hasn't been passed yet, but that's something that our, our administration and our commissioners are looking into. Um, whether or not the 50% for the application, applicant, if that quantum will be lowered, that may be down the road, but right now I know they're working on the successorship. But again, as of today, applicants 50%, their successor must be 50% or so. Okay, thanks. Let's see. This one comes from, let's, you know what? I think Cora raised her hand. So, Cora, go ahead and ask, uh, ask your question, please. It was similar to the one from um, out of state. Um, so, we apply with our current income and say we got selected and we're going to now move towards um, to the big island, right? But your income has dropped. Would they reconsider the percentage based on our new income because of the move? Or are you going to stick with the original prior to us being uh, on island or in state? Or well, on island? The income projections are actually taken for 12 months going forward. So if you're currently making X dollars, but you're going to move, so you're going to take a different job and you anticipate a lower amount, we need to get some verification from a potential employer on what that income is going to be. Okay. Thank you. So, 
Um, yeah, we would try to work with you if you already know or have been contacted by a potential employer and they can give us a letter, then we can go from there. So Dylan, can I follow up on that? And it, it's more of a question also. So from now till June, those that stated they're interested, um, you all will go through to see if they're eligible, correct? correct. And yes. Okay. So I select, right? So I, I was deemed eligible. So I was invited to the last selection meeting. I select a unit that won't be available to the October to November timeframe. Will you then requalify me as we get closer or once you've qualified them in June, they, they're just in a waiting period now until their house is ready? Well, basically put them in a holding pattern because our requirements is that everything that we submit must have a, a date of 120 days or before the lease date. So say uh, November 1st is a move-in date. We go back to October, September, August, July. By July 1st, everything that we have verified has to be after the July 1st date. So those that are moving in August, we're gonna handle all of those applications first. And then if it's necessary, we might have to ask for uh, an update or refreshing of the basic data that we need for those folks that are moving in later in the year. So at lot selection, we will move ahead, as I said, with those moving in first and get them completed so they can move in August, September, and then we'll deal with the balance of the folks um, after everybody gets selected for the second phase or, and we get ready to move them in. Okay, but you're doing eligibility. You are doing eligibility first then in June, April to June, in order, in order just to, to move them to the last selection. In order to determine if they're eligible income wise. Now it might be since there's two months between that time period that things could change where someone um, lost a job, got a different job, got a raise that affects their income. And it could be determined too between the August and October period if somebody could become ineligible because of a change in job. So we have to take each, each household as a separate entity to determine how they qualify or if they don't qualify. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Just to add one point, I know our timing we've got on the presentation late August, it's more realistically on the first, the lower street that we're looking at like a, a September dates for those move in and then likely um, on October, November for the, for the, upper, um, for the upper street just to kind of reset uh, timing expectations. Okay, thanks so much. Let's move on to the next question. This question comes from Dave Aline. Dave Aline asks the question, when do we get the packet for qualification? Um, after this presentation today, once um, April 19th comes about and everybody that's listening in today submits your responses and DHHL will put together a list of interested parties and they will be getting that list to 3150 as soon as that is transmitted the application packets are being put together already and they will be sent out immediately so you should get them in the next well as soon as we get them then the, the packets will go out Okay, very good. This next question comes from Jadine. I believe this was answered earlier, but uh, let me ask it and perhaps we can just uh, uh, respond to it real quick again. Jadine asks, if you entered and uh, if you entered and eligible at 30% AMI, do you stay at 30% until reach certification or for the 15 years? You stay at 30% for the 15 years unless there's a change in the household size. Okay. Very good. Next uh, comment comes from Michelle's iPhone. Michelle says, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for being on the call with us today. Um, Jackie is the next question. And Jackie asks, will my emotional support animal be allowed? Um, you'd have to submit a request for that. In some cases, it may be, but there are other um, requirements that are going to be asked of you. 
Okay. So, Michael, um, so I know we talked a lot and there was a lot of questions about if your income increases, right? So if your income increases and you're um, during the time frame, you would stay at 30%. And Deline had mentioned, as long as it's the same household members, correct? But if what if additional household members move in? And so I guess, if, I guess my question is, you have a three bedroom and a four bedroom. What is the maximum household size for a three bedroom? Because if they increase there, but they stay maybe under the 60%, will they have to move out of a three bedroom and into a four bedroom? You know, if the household size increases. That's a choice that the family makes because the occupancy crosses over. For example, in a three bedroom, the minimum is three, the maximum is seven oh. in a three bedroom. In a four bedroom, the minimum is four, the maximum is nine. So somebody could have a household of six and be eligible either a three bedroom or a four bedroom. The difference is what is the rent going to be? Okay. The, the Thank choice you. is up to the family. Okay. So as long as the three bedroom doesn't exceed a seven person household, they can right. stay in there. Right. Okay. So for okay. example, let, let me extend that just a little bit more. We have more three bedrooms than there are four bedrooms. There are 17 three bedrooms and seven four bedrooms. So say all the big families, all the seven four bedrooms, and there's a household of five, they didn't get to a four bedroom because they're further on down. They might have been number 18 to pick a home. They have the option of the three bedroom or not. So it, which one they take depends on what their preference is. Okay. Very good, Deline. Thank you very much. This next question comes from Rowena. Rowena asks, being this is a rent program, who is the company who are the maintenance people in charge of things that break, like water, electrical stuff, like, uh, like such? 3150 is a property management company. All reports of repairs that are needed should go through them. So the d distinction, so the the water bill for the home would be set up and uh, paid for in the um, the tenant's name, the electric bill, um, the sewer bill, those items would all be set up and paid for by the um, by the tenant. As Daly mentioned earlier, there is the an allowance that's being provided um, against the the gross rents. So um, to to uh, attempt to offset uh, some of those charges. I will say from a mate, so there's a difference between when we talk about making uh, repairs and maintenance. So in this case, um, the repair of the item, uh, if we're talking about say the the homes, um, the, uh, the, the maintenance of the home itself, right? Uh, the front yard, the that landscape maintenance, the, um, the trimming of plants would all be fall to the responsibility for the tenants, as well as the um, any landscaping within the boundaries of the lot. Um, Mike, I don't know if you can go back up to the, to the map that we have. Sure, stand by. Um, but, you know, if a, if a roof leaks, you know, the roof is, main, is, is part of um, the house that would be um, maintained by 3150. Um, if your waterbed leaked, that would be part of that, you know, we're not maintaining that piece, so that would be for the tenant. Um, the parts that uh, the main components that we're seeing with the unit itself, so the home's plumbing system is part of the, is something that would be maintained by the uh, 3150. Um, uh, what's, uh, you know, the, um, any of your kitchen, um, you know, household appliances that you would bring obviously would, would, would fall back to the, to the tenant. If we probably these are on a case by case basis, but for, for the most part, the, the the house itself is maintained by thirty one fifty. Um, and then if you've and you know, with anything, if you move out, there's you know an expected wear and tear expectation of normal wear and tear with that with that unit. Anything that would fall to damages, um, you know, if you've got a 
if there's a hole in the wall that was installed, you know, placed through there, obviously there'd be a, 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 a addressing of that that repair of that damage would would be uh, referred back to the to the tenant. Thank you, Todd. I brought back up the uh, the slides. Is there one particular slide that you wanted to display? So when we look at this slide, the lower street, uh, the um, the the bigger street if you guys are looking so that's going to be part of the the um is lower in elevation and um those lots if you're referencing this those aren't the the outer line is the with respect to the lot lines um the inner line is just more geographical of where the the house can be um when we get closer to the the lot selection I'll have a different slide that shows the topography. Each of these lots has some level of slope uh, component to it. Um, and so when you're, when you're considering the lot selections, yeah, you, you'll see, you'll notice that um, some of them contain some, um, all of them contain some level of slope. Um, some contain more than others. And so as you're, as you're doing the lot selection, that whole boundary of that lot is what is what uh, falls to the maintenance responsibility for that for that um, that particular tenant. So, um, uh, yeah, if you can, it's um, yeah. So on a different map, we'll, we'll have that available for the uh, for the lot selection or, or going into it. You can kind of see where the the boundaries of that particular lot are going to be, and obviously the the resident or the tenant would maintain within those lot lines all right i don't know if you can see it todd but um, on this picture i do have a laser pointer that i'm using and kind of pointing out some of the differences in elevations here yeah so here's a slope right here uh, there's a slope back here leading back there's also a slope right here where the yeah. fence line is on this particular or on this particular so, photo so on the where you have your cursor now with that fence line the homes mm -hmm. that are along that first would be maintaining not uh would be maintaining down to the lot line. Uh, it's, it can be a little bit confusing. The fences are designed to maintain, uh, typically there'll be a top of slope uh, fence for kind of safety. And then there'll be, and that fence may not always be along the lot line. So we do want to reference when you're looking at the lots where the particular lot boundary lines are for the for the, those particular lots. I'll have a better exhibit when we get closer to the lot selection piece that, you, that everybody will be able to, uh, to reference. Okay, very good. I think that concludes that part of it. I'm going to go ahead and stop share. Wait, before, uh, before you stop sharing, can sure. this, this um, phase that you're looking at in the completed units, the one on the right, no, the, no, the one that you were just showing. This one here? No, the, that one. Okay. The one on the, the White House, what what unit is that? Is that a, a master bedroom on top only, as opposed to the run on the uh, left? That's the three bedrooms on the top. Uh, we can circulate the floor plans. I don't know as you asked that question. I'm not sure which floor plan that one correlates to, but we can I'll, we can display the the floor plans for you. Uh, because I, I, I've seen the floor plans, and I'm just wondering what it looks like in the exterior. I mean, like yeah. as you look at it. Todd, what she's asking for, and I think it's a, a brilliant idea, is that the house with the floor plan. So here's the shape of the house and here's the floor plan. But I think that is, I think that's the one that has the master bedroom upstairs, but I think we should give them both together so that they can match the house to the floor plan. That's what you're looking for. No, no, great suggestion. I can, I can pull that sense to me. those exhibits yeah. together for you. Let's do that. That'd be great. Yep. Yeah. So we've been doing this a lot and then there's always something so simple. I, so I apologize for that. That's a yeah, great Todd. idea. So we'll work with you all um, when we put together the lot selection um, invitation and then anything else that we want to include in that. And then just to, on, on that same point, so there are some units that were designed with ADA um, um, components in mind. And so there's, there's, a lot, there's a lot that's going to go into that lot selection piece. And to select the ADA, will you need some kind of documentation or? Yes, yes, you will. I'm sorry, I didn't know if I was on or off. Yes, in order to be able to um, 
on the application, it asks whether or not you require the features of an ADA unit. And if you check off yes, then we'll move from there. Okay, thanks so much. Uh, let's see, next question comes from Chastity. Chastity asks, are pets allowed? Well, they may be, but they also come with a pet addendum that has requirements that must be met. Okay, thanks so much. Next question, this is uh, Rowena again. She asks the question, water main breakage? You know, as described, that would sound like something that the would be referred to um, property management and be addressed by um, as a maintenance of the of the property. I would also okay. probably have a second look in terms of what caused the break, but just in terms of if we're talking about if there's a a break on a on a on a main water supply for the uh, the house and it was just for some um, it just broke for some unknown reason, then that would be something that 3150 would be um, as, a, as a maintenance item. Okay, thanks, Todd. Uh, next, next question. This is actually a comment from M. Pacquiao. Hi, Mike, not sure if anyone mentioned there's a lot of background noise, things shifting around. Sorry about that, folks. Um, I'm doing this, I'm broadcasting this from home. I got some people outside. My neighbors across the street are, I don't know what they're doing. They're vacuuming something. I don't know, but plenty racket. Sorry about that, but hope you can hear me over the noise. Um, let's see. Rowena says, thank you all. Cora asks the question, what is the lot size? Oh, well, they differ. Um, I'm not sure that you can see the lot sizes on the map that was sent out. We could include in the packet that goes out um, an information sheet that shows you the size of the lot, whether or not it's a three or four bedroom, whether or not all bedrooms upstairs. We can include that in the packet to go out. Yep. Hey, hey, Todd, are you are you are you out there now? Who's out there? Is you are you there now, Todd? No, no, I I flew back um, uh, yesterday morning on the uh, on the red eye. Because I'm going back to the same, I like this way this whole thing is going. So if we could get maybe a picture, a, you know, let's let's talk about this offline because these this is a great discussion because I think we can do better with that packet, you know, give a picture, look, lot size picture, you know, we'll just keep, just keep, note them all down and see if we can't help them uh, with that. Yeah, we've that. got some great drone footage from aerial photos. So we can try to, if it's not in your packet directly, Michelle, we can add a, a separate link to try to get people a visual in the project. It is an active project uh, construction zone. Uh, when you head over there, I would say the, our, the, the homes for um, the 24 homes are the upper streets as you're, as you're, um, as you're approaching. Everything behind the green, um, uh, debris construction fences as part of HEMA. That's not part of our project. Ours are just the the upper two, um, the upper two middle um, cul-de-sacs uh, on that uh, on that development. The lower, the first two streets represent the original phase one, and that was the sixty homes that were what was part of phase one. Um, and the way it worked out, there's one house. The first house on the corner is actually part of phase one. Um, if it looks finished, it's because that it was actually finished as part of phase one. And so uh, lot, uh, uh, it ends up being lot 62 is, is the first house of phase two. So while um, we, we do still try to limit what we have in our packet. You know, we do send out the map to show the houses, where the houses are plotted, a matrix that gives them information, lot size, what house is on that lot, what model, so forth. Um, but if anything, we can throw some pictures and other ty types of things up on our website. All right, thank you all so very much. So um, it looks like that's the end of the questions in the chat. I don't see any any other hands raised. But before we depart today, ladies and gentlemen, I do have a couple of questions myself. Um, and this is really for you folks. So if any of you have additional questions related to 
the um, the properties, the rentals, anything like that. Any additional questions, Delene? What is a good email address to where they can enter questions, additional questions? Write this down, folks. Did did we say that all questions should go back to DHHL so that they can be oh. compiled in another FAQ? Did we say no. that last week, Michelle? We I'm not positive. Should the no, I don't believe we said that, but um, to make one FAQ, but the, our office does have a main line, right? Our contact center. Okay. So, and then if they do, what happens if, if they do call us on the main line, if they do have questions that relates more to 3150 or that type of question, then we do refer them over um, to 3150 or you can go on and that number is 808-620-9500. Did everybody get that written down? 808-620-9500. That's the main line for DHHL. So if you do have additional questions about this program, the call center will be able to direct or refer as to where these questions can be answered. And as again, a reminder, uh, we have been recording this session and we will post it on the landing page on our website. So that uh, if you have any other family members who missed it today, I know that we did have a couple of them that were unable to make it uh, for they had other commitments. Um, so they can go back and rewatch it. Or if you'd like to rewatch it, if there's anything that you missed that you wanted to re uh, re-verify, including all these questions because it's all being recorded. Um, it will all be available. Okay, so I believe that's all. Thank you for, let's see, a, a comment from Sid. Thank you for planning to create more on the, in the lots and units, present, uh, units presentation. Todd and Doug, much appreciated. Uh, lots of thank yous coming in. Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to thank you all so very much for your time today. It's about five minutes after 12. Uh, please go out and enjoy your weekend. Don't forget, tonight is Merry Monarch Awana night, so make sure that you got your pool in your hair and you got all your inu and your and your kao kao, all right? So have a wonderful weekend. Take care, and we'll see you folks again. Mahalo nui. Aloha. Aloha. Thanks, Thanks Bye.